James Calm and today we're reporting to you from Metaphor Contemporary Art. We're having a symposium on the legacy of abstract painting 1960s, 1970s and a panel discussion featuring Matthew Delegate, Stephen Westfall, Fong Bui and Jed Pearl. Stephen Main. Jed Pearl. Stephen Westfall. Samantha Delegate on the end. critic at The New Republic and has just recently published and has just recently come out in paperback the uh, really great book, um, New Art City, about <laughs> mid-century Manhattan and the excitement of the art world at that time. And uh, it sort of, in a sense, forms the basis of the panel today, which is the, the legacy of the 60s and 70s, particularly as it relates to abstraction, going forward into the future. Uh, those were extremely fertile decades, and I think artists of many stripes are still kind of grappling with the issues that were you know, raised at that time. Bon Gui is the publisher, as most of you know, of the Brooklyn Braille, which is a, a fantastic cultural newspaper being published here in Brooklyn. Uh, Bon has a particular interest in, I think, the continuance of history and the these kinds of touchstones, you know, the, the sorts of things that artists think about going back and where they come from, where their work comes from. Matthew Delegate is uh, also a painter. He shows in Houston currently. Uh, the uh, Sonia Roish Gallery he had a recent show there that was really very interesting. And uh, Matthew also has spearheaded uh, with his partner Rosanna Martinez the terrific. Uh, web project, Mindspace.com, uh, which is devoted to reductive abstraction and, uh, all around the globe. I mean, he does, uh, it's, it's really quite a, a large resource for artists interested in it. The instigator of all of this is the, the life and work of Warren Jackson. Um, Warren was like one of the first guys I met when I came to New York in 1980. I, I think I just ran into him at some gallery, and he, had, he knew who I was. I didn't know who he was uh, uh, because uh, he had been, you know, he, he read art magazines and he read, he read my writing and, uh, and he, did, he didn't talk to me about necessarily my writing. I, I forget how he, he you know, lost in the midst of time, but uh, uh, he was sort of shambly, the hair had already gone white and, and uh, he had a camera around his neck and uh, 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 he was, uh, and, but he, he used the camera to take pictures of shows so that he could look at them again or take pictures of people that he met. He really was an archivist at heart. Just very friendly. Uh, he knew, he also knew that I was not especially like, I wasn't like anybody important or anything. He just wanted to talk about something that I had written uh, and how it pertained to abstraction. So I saw this, uh, this, this diamond painting and uh, I thought, I this guy better know. And, uh, and as I got to know more ambiently, because we, you know, we, uh, we weren't like close buddies or anything, but I saw him at, at American Abstract Artists meetings. Um, and uh, he would always have something interesting to say, something about the history of what we're on. I think, you know, one of the wagers an artist makes, an artist makes wagers on many levels, you know, uh, in the studio. One is that they're going, their work is going to get written some point in their lifetime, and, he, and another is that their work is going to get recognized at some point after their lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what to do, I, I, you know, um, uh, I, don't, I don't know how, how that works for us, uh, you know, in a, you know in a, in a governed as we are by, the, by what our senses tell us is the tyranny of the one life universe. Um, but, um, but nevertheless, that's one of the, the paths we make uh, in the studio, okay. and in order to keep working uh, uh, with a, through a, 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 a lack of recognition, while movements come and go, and many of these movements, and many of these are, are much of the arts are you know, even uh, the short time, the short time back in the seems rather trivial. Um, uh, uh, one of the bets we make is that 
maybe our R R R will survive. And I think one of the nice things about this show um, is it, a show of historical depth. It's a show of, uh, of uh, uh, almost entirely abstraction. And it's a painting we painted. I think it's a fifty a high school student. About eighteen. About eighteen. Um, and obviously he had some chops as a figure of painter. Um, at a time when that was pretty counted for something in terms of finding the sphere of space as an abstract painter. As an abstract painter. Um, uh, who else is out there? Uh, what, are we, what else have we missed? And uh, uh, it's great having a Jed here, uh, 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 someone with a historical uh, view on a question like that. And it's great having someone like Matthew uh, or Fong here, uh, two younger artists um, uh, uh, who are working shoulder to shoulder uh, with uh, people making uh, quality work and, and writers and, and artists and people from all persuasions and all disciplines. Uh, it's not really a question so much, but an observation uh, is the the uh, the source outside of New York for much of what gets framed as a kind of uh, quintessential New York language of painting. Um, uh, Who have we missed? Uh, yes, my feeling is that the art world is not and has never been a fair place. It has never been a place where quality of various real kinds necessarily gets recognized. So uh, for my money, the, the standard histories uh, of certainly the art of the last 60 years give very little sense of a lot, of, an enormous number of people who for me are very, very important. Um, I, 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 I think that the idea that there is some uh, accurate and just and uh, expeditious sifting out of quality, and quality is a very complicated thing, there are many different qualities, that there's some sifting out that takes place very quickly uh, is a delusion. Um, I've been in the thick of this for I don't know, 35 years, and many, many of the people whose work is, who are working today, who are alive, who are middle-aged, who are younger, who are no longer with us, many, many of the people whose work I think is most important, uh, have not gotten the recognition I think they deserve. And by the way, this is not because they have not shown their work, it is not because they have not endeavored to gain recognition. Uh, I, I, I simply think that the, um, the criteria uh, by which certainly since the 60s the art world has uh, made its decisions, uh, its various decisions, the, the criteria by which various parts of the art world have made various decisions about who's up and who's down. For my money, for my, to my eye, to my taste, to my sensibility, have very little to do uh, with a lot of the things that matter, with a lot of qualities that matter. Uh, I hope that, you know, to the question of is there, I, I, think I hope for a real shifting out. In fact, when you look back now to the 19th century, this is a development the last 30 years, I think uh, quality in the 19th century has gotten more confused rather than less confused. And people like, uh, you know, Bouguereau or Messonnier who have quality, they have some quality, but I, 40, 50 years ago, there was a general agreement that they were nowhere near as interesting as 